There are still many things, many, many things we don't understand. Human medicine continues to advance and I think it depends on this kind of interest in fundamental biological processes. So it's very important to be imaginative. We have to inspire junior scientists. Tell these kids, don't be shy. Ask a question. Ask something unique. We talk about the most important feature of modern science is that called innovation. And I think is the driving force for economic development. We have to inspire junior scientists and it's important to give them the intention and give them the exposure. I think I know for myself and probably true for most scientists that we can go back and look at our formative years when we were students, undergraduate students, or even before that, you know, maybe one professor paid attention and, and gave us time to explain something to us or whatever that led to the inspiration which changed our whole life and our careers to inspire us to pursue science. And I think for all of us, as opposed to becoming a, you know, going into a professional career or something like that, there was some step, there was some key that led us to go down this path and to have this curiosity that's required to study science. And I think nurturing that and giving the students exposure to that helps them make that transition if it's the right one for them. There are still many things, many, many things we don't understand about the way that organisms and particularly humans' bodies work and how they go wrong in disease. We need to understand the fundamentals in order to be able to treat disease. I think there's lots of good reasons for trying to understand the molecular details of how cells work and how they can go wrong. That I've been interested in, very interested in, is how from a single cell, through many, many divisions and increasing complexity, do you generate an organism? How does that happen? It's, it seems uh, um, incredible. So for me, that's a matter of intense interest and curiosity. I also uh, believe, and, and I know it to be true, that an understanding of these fundamental biological processes can lead to, to therapies for patients um, in surprising ways, in ways that could never have been anticipated um, uh, from the outset of these uh, these investigations. I mean, everyone knows about artificial intelligence and neurodegeneration and aging and cancer. But if you ask anyone, how does the skin age? We don't really quite understand that. Yeah, this is one of the themes of my lab. So I think this, this is the venue to expose such problems, to bring to the attention of the young ones the whole idea or the fun of asking questions. So there was a student who asked me, does it help to use your imagination? So the data that I'm presenting is based on data, facts. But there's a little bit of imagination and sometimes there's a lot of imagination that goes into trying to tell a story because you have all the facts. So it's very important to be imaginative. Yeah? And this is where you tell these kids, don't be shy, ask a question. Ask something unique. We talk about the most important feature of modern science is that called innovation. You always want to explore something unknown rather than to practice what has been known and to apply. Just like a battle. You want to battle the frontier. You don't stay in, you know, withdraw in, in, in a safe place. Innovation, I think, is the driving force for economic development, right? So, so I heard a, a, a seminar recently, they um, made a chart of, of the, the increase in GDP in the U.S. It's very clear that this growth is due to technology innovation, science innovation. So I think it's, it's the future, right? So, so I can't imagine a uh, country continue to grow uh, without frontier. Uh, discoveries in science and technology. So I think that's uh, from sort of the larger perspective of, of human benefit, that, that is a, a powerful reason to continue to encourage um, curiosity-driven science and to um, invest in, in this kind of effort to understand um, how things work, how biology really works.